all of this today. In today's video, we're gonna make foaming hand soap, Clorox wipes, all-purpose cleaner, Swiffer refill, dish soap, and laundry soap. All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Teal House Farm. Today is a sick day. All of my kids managed to get strep throat, and at least they're all getting it at the same time. <laughs> and so they are all languishing at home watching TV and playing on iPads while they get better. And I am going to restock all my cleaning supplies. So I'm getting really low on my lot of stuff because um, I make a lot of our own cleaning supplies here. It's a lot more frugal. I have more control of the ingredients. Most of it is the money savings, I'll be honest. If I had a million dollars, I'd probably go buy the really expensive, really good smelling Tide detergent because I like it when my laundry smells like that. I know you could talk about all the chemicals and stuff, but I like the smell. But anyway, forever now, probably almost 10 years now, I have been making a lot of our cleaning supplies and soaps and stuff because it just saves us so much money. Uh, we're going to make laundry soap today. We're going to make hand soap today. We're going to make a uh, dishwasher or dishwashing soap, not for a dishwasher, but for hand washing. And uh, we're gonna refill our Swiffer wet jet um, with our own soap so we don't have to buy a replacement, all those things. So come join me today as we put all this together. Let's make laundry soap first. We have our big two and a half gallon pot and we're going to add half a bar to Fels naphtha to it. And we need to add 15 cups of water now, everyone always says it's not laundry detergent, it's laundry soap, and that is very true. And the main difference is the amount of water you have to use to wash. We live on a farm, so I want everything super clean. So I do not have a high efficiency washing machine. So soap works great. I don't have to have detergent. We're going to shred that felves naphtha down. Looks like chunky cheese right now, but we're gonna go ahead and simmer it until it's all melted together into that water, into a nice uniform liquid. While that's getting simmered down, we're gonna go ahead and put out our jars. I just used these old juice jars. I'm gonna need five of them for this recipe. And we're going to fill them halfway with water. So it's about four cups of water. Okay, we're going to add one cup of borax and one cup of super washing soda. And we're going to turn the heat off and just mix those in really well and let the laundry soap cool down just a bit. It doesn't have to be cold, but not piping hot. We don't want to melt our containers. And then we top them off with the laundry soap. Now, sometimes this will separate when it sits. It's still totally fine to use. Just give it a good shake before you use it in your washing machine. Next up, we're gonna make some dishwashing soap. Again, this is for washing in the sink, not in the dishwasher. We're gonna need some Castile soap. I like to use Kirk's, and we'll need any kind of essential oil smell you like and some white vinegar. Pretty simple recipe. We're going to start by adding four cups of water to our pot. One question I get asked a lot is if I can use liquid Castile soap instead of shredding down a bar, and you absolutely can. Just know the money savings really won't be there. Um, the money is really saved when you're gonna put the effort into making your own liquid Castile soap, which is what we're doing. We're going to cut this bar in half, we're gonna shred it down, and we're gonna melt it into the water to make a nice uniform liquid, and that's basically all that liquid Castile soap is, but you spend a pretty penny for it at the store. Once it's all simmered down, it looks nice and clear, not chunky anymore, we're gonna remove it from the heat, and we're going to add to it a quarter cup of white vinegar, and a few drops of whatever essential oil you wanna use. Tea tree oil is probably the best one as far as its disinfecting properties, but I do not like the smell, so I use the lemon oil. So if you don't mind tea tree oil, that would probably be the best choice. Then we're gonna fill up our bottles. This is in super speed. You actually have to do this really slow because it bubbles and suds up and it'll all pour out of the jar. So have some patience here when filling these. All right, soap's done. Let's make our Clorox wipes. I have two containers of them and I'm going to fill them with about 50 little squares. These are cotton t-shirts, cotton receiving blankets that I've cut up. And we're just gonna kind of split them half and half into the two different containers. I keep one in my kitchen, I put one in the bathroom and these are great disinfecting wipes that don't use bleach. So in order to make the solution, we're going to add about a tablespoon of dish soap. I'm using my homemade dish soap. You could use a store-bought one. And we're going to put that in the jar, which already has two cups of water, and then add one cup of rubbing alcohol, at least a 70% dilution, because we wanna make sure that this will actually disinfect. 
Then a few drops of whatever essential oil. I'm just going to use lemon again. It's kind of whatever. It helps hide the smell of the rubbing alcohol. And then we're going to split that solution between our two containers. It's going to need to sit for about 30 minutes to give these squares time to soak up all the water. And so be a little patient before you use them the first time, but we're just going to put the lids on and let them sit. And then they're going to be ready to use whenever we have a surface that needs a disinfected. Almost done. We have quite a few things made, but we still have a few more to go. Next up, we're going to need four cups of water and we're gonna make our foaming hand soap. This again is going to use our Castile soap. We're gonna finish off that bar we cut in half. To our four cups of water, we're going to shred in our half bar of Castile soap. Again, the Castile soap is really hard, so it takes a little bit of muscle to get this done. We're going to simmer it over medium low heat until it's all melted together like we just did when we made our dish soap. I'm going to need four quarts to make these. I reuse the same quarts over and over again. You'll notice they're starting to get soapy residue on the inside, so we give that one a little bit of a clean. And I'm going to go grab the one that's currently in the bathroom being used. We'll top that one off. To these jars, we're going to fill them a little more than three quarters of the way with water. And then we're gonna to top them off with our soap mixture that we just melted down. If you don't wanna make foaming hand soap, if you wanna make regular hand soap, you just wouldn't dilute it as much. I bought the pump off of Amazon, I'll link it below. It's a special foaming pump so you get that nice sudsy foam. Okay, next up, let's refill the Swiffer Wet Jet. These can be an absolute pain to get open. The first time it's almost impossible. I have a hack for that below because you wanna make sure you don't crack the cap to get it open. After the first time though, it gets a little easier with just some muscle. We're gonna fill it up about three quarters of the way with water. And then we're going to use the soap I have left over from when I made hand soap to put probably about a quarter cup of soap in here. To that, we will add a dash of vinegar, which helps with disinfecting because it's a farm and we're cleaning all sorts of stuff off the floor. You could add some essential oils if you want to. Be got it careful. This is a plastic container, so be wary. Cap back on nice and tight and it's done. Last thing, we're gonna make an all-purpose spray. I cheat when I do this. Um, we're just gonna take this sprayer I got at the farm store. We're gonna fill it up with water. You guessed it right. And then I'm gonna top it off with just a dollar store bot cleaner. This is not a disinfecting spray. This is just to help get sticky stuff off of surfaces when we're just picking up. And we are all done. It's all made. Okay, there you have it. We're all done. It didn't actually take that long. I did it several times through the day. So if you've been seeing the clock like on the wall that it's been moving, these actually aren't that time consuming to make. I just had a lot of other things to do today, taking care of the kids who aren't feeling well and things like that. So, so I had to stop and start a lot. But if I sat down and did this uninterrupted, I could get all this made in well under an hour. And it saves my family so much money. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year. Um, so I highly recommend it. It is a little bit of time, but it is well worth it financially um, if you're needing to really scrimp and save those pennies. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we will catch you next time.